All right, so I'm gonna have to just lure that big guy all the way back here, and I have to deal with the other enemies that accompany him as well. Oh good, I actually got the red barrel for a change. I don't know why I clipped the geometry last time. And why can't I fucking move? At least I can use this gurney to my advantage to reload while he's busy chasing me. That sounded terrible. There's no logic to why it takes less to actually bisect this guy, but so much more just to finish him off. There's no sense to this. And there's no sense to why they're reusing this enemy. What is this, like the fourth time? And they're reusing the same music too? This is starting to give me Dying Light 2 vibes, because Dying Light 2's idea of a build-up is to have you fight a bunch of meth addicts before you get to waltz. How the fuck is that a build-up? And in this case, apropos to Dying Light 2, you're, f you're fighting the same boss over and over again. It's like fighting those trolls in God of War 2018. You fight too many of them. And they're the official bosses of that game, and everybody hated that. But how is this acceptable? Am I just going to be buying ammo constantly b before this penultimate showdown with Ferris? Stop. I'm trying to... What are you prioritizing this guy for? How much ammo do I have? Okay, I still have uh, 37. So I should definitely buy more. I don't know what this lurker is doing, but it's just running into the wall here. What a dumb enemy type. God, the lurkers in, in Dead Space 2 were so much more interesting than this variant. And this variant is so underpowered when it blows up. Really? We're doing this again? This is not- what, Why are they still trying to introduce jump scares as if everything we've been doing has been so scary and so tense? It's just been a massive what the fuck moment. Well, now they're talking about Subject Zero here, but I don't give a fuck about the story anymore. Oh, it's giving me the tactical pistol schematic here. The lab. At the heart of the prison. I love how he just says that. What were they doing here? Experimenting on the prisoners. And figures. Yeah. Dun dun dun! Oh, this is supposed to be some fantastic revelation! Hey! What are you doing? I said, what are you doing? It's only an inhibitor to slow the rate of infection. You said you could cure her. I can, with your help. Do you have to try? This is just so out of the blue! This feels like something that should have happened in the middle of the game, not near the end! Soon everything will become clear. Now, why don't you start by telling me about this? You saw the recordings, you know what happened on Europa? I have no idea what happened on Europa. What is I'm Europa? Is it a planet? No. Is it a place on Earth? What is it? Are you sure you really want to? Yes! Do you wish? <sighs> what did you do to me? Give you what you wanted. The curse of knowledge. <sighs> Your core is linked with hers now. Or at least it will be once the sync is complete. The data won't transfer immediately, but her memories will fill in the gaps, give you the answers you seek. Okay. Just tell me how we can cure her. You can use this to synthesize an antidote, but you'll need to extract a sample from the Warden's Elf. This is what? The gold. This... madness. 
his ridiculous protocol. During the original outbreak, a colonist known as Subject Zero demonstrated a unique ability to synthesize the biofish. Based on the yeah. brainchild of Oswell E. Spencer to create a more enhanced race. Oh my fucking god! This is a trope that has been done a million fucking times! Dying Light 2 did the exact same thing! Next phase of human evolution! It's just a repeat of Oswell E. Spencer's plan! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Unfortunately, he was killed during the Arca sterilization. This is so fucking lame! The warden seeks to replicate the conditions of the original outbreak. Oh my god, come on! As subject Alpha. By releasing the virus into the prison? Unbelievable! And he's calling it a virus now! How can he do this? There's no way he can come. I was to become a god! Oh, God! Dating back centuries. I can't take this seriously anymore. She's, she's waking. It seems like we can't have this kind of zombie game anymore without some mention of human evolution. Unbelievable! He'll want it more than anything. It's the key to all he seeks. What about you? I played my part in all of this as well. There's no escape for me. Oh my God. Black Iron is where I'm What the fuck am I playing right now? Why is this becoming the future of these kind of zombie games? Every time with this whole evolution thing. Unfucking real. We got what we need. Now let's go finish this. Come on. Oh my god. How are you feeling? Like something's inside my head. I'm trying to take over. Hold on, we'll be there soon. This is me right now. I am just wanting to smash this game into bits right now. This is just a fucking mess. It really is. Human evolution, a repeat of Oswald E. Spencer's plan. Oh, the virus leaked out. This and that. Oh my fucking god! This just confirms what I've been saying! The Callisto Protocol is just a game that exists! And it feels more like it's trying to pay homages to other fucking survival horror games like Resident Evil and Dead Space. They're actually trying to be its own fucking thing! It's repeating the exact same mistakes as Dying Light 2 did, as well. And this is a linear experience, and Dying Light 2 is an open world game, but they're both committing huge sins right now. Unfucking real This is ridiculous right now. Oh, what's this? Oh, a bunch of hallucinations that don't matter anymore. Did you see that? Oh my see god. That? I just need to ask it again, guys. What the fuck am I playing right now? Am I playing a game at this point? Or am I just playing as a hodgepodge of video game ideas done a million fucking times? But done so poorly and without grace at all. And they were hyping this game up as if there'd be some big revelation with Black Iron. But it's just a repeat of Oswald E. Spencer's plans. And now we're getting this hallucination moment for no reason at all. What happened back there? Danny's been such a boring character. Elias is a forgettable character, despite the good things he's done. Jacob has just been a bore. And now we're just suddenly like working for this doctor now. Don't got a choice. Yeah. What is all this? At least this room is the best looking room of the entire game. There's just nothing to salvage what this game has become right now. Yeah, my, my score is getting lowered. This is now officially a 3.5 out of 10 right now. What the hell? Oh, joy. 
He's actually linked up with Danny's core, and, and we're experiencing this. Danny's memories, seeing the truth of Europa. A diluted test sample released from one of our labs. Oh joy! The virus leaked out, it's just like in Resident Evil Fucking One. What is doing here at Black Eye? This is so fucking hilarious. This is a new kind of comedy all together. Make us whole! Make us fucking whole! Excellent! Jacob, what do you got there? What we got here is none of our business. But come on, we got a job to do. What the fuck is this? I feel nothing for this at, at all. Danny has been such a badly built up character, and I'm supposed to feel something for this? I tried to protect oh, she, she suddenly has a sister out of the blue. Europa wasn't a terrorist attack. They doctored the footage to cover up what they were planning to test the Black Iron. And the cargo that we transported played a part. As if that wasn't already fucking obvious in the earlier parts of the game. But I didn't. You made the wrong choice. And why is it making it out like Jacob's memories were rewritten or something? Or as if he was brainwashed? I don't understand that. Yes, you can. We're almost there. No, I can feel it. Uh, hear it <laughs> in my head. Okay. You stay here. I'm gonna come back when I get the cure. Uh, I can take care of myself. Okay. Make it <sighs> done. Just constantly infecting prisoners until eventually one is found because he has the special genotype. Yay! <laughs> Unfucking real. UJC printing at your service. And guess what, guys? We get to sit through more of this nonsense. Mashing the X button because this game doesn't have any kind of quantity system. This is so over the top and so overblown and so unoriginal. Like everything is just so fucking predictable and uninspired and so uninteresting. All the set pieces that they set up for the future in this game are already so predictable in the earlier parts of the game. And they've pretty much just taken tropes from Resident Evil and Dead space. Excellent like, and they've choice. spent more time just with the nostalgia aspect, reminding you of how great those games were. And this game just cannot stand on its own two legs. It has no leg to stand on at all. Executing. It had some very fun parts to it, but for the most part, so much of this game has been fucking abysmal with its confused designs, with the way it's designed certain combat sections, with the way its enemy types are designed, with the amount of times the clunkiness of the game really shows, with how much the story doesn't feel engaging in the slightest, how much you've been diverted onto all these mindless distractions, the characters are so fucking boring, and now apparently Jacob is remembering things because he forgot about them, or maybe he was brainwashed, I don't know. I, I have no fucking clue anymore. I really don't care. This is absolutely appalling.
on so many levels. They couldn't even make such a trope interesting. They couldn't even make the build-up interesting to this whole idea of this being all about human evolution, this and that. They couldn't make the writing, the script, and the screenplay interesting enough to waylay the trite use of this trope. A trite and outdated concept. And they're just stacking me up on all this stuff right now. One has to wonder if that's even enough ammunition for what's coming. And we spent so much time fighting that stupid split head boss fight. I don't even know what's coming next. It's just gonna be a repeat of Theris. And what the hell has the warden been doing this whole entire time? Your methods are rash. You risk too much. The greater risk is in failing to act. Especially when the commonality is finally within our grasp. How does he not see the door open? And right on time. He approaches the survivor. What's with these alien races? They mentioned that name, yeah. Where's the alpha? Just give me the goddamn antidote. I'm not gonna let her die. <laughs> Are we really getting to this point with alien life forms? Oh, sentient alien life? Remember when Bolt, that 2008 film about that dog? who thinks he's a superhero, but he's actually not. Remember at the very end of the film, when uh, when Penny and Bolt leave the set because of how cruel the manager is? And the manager decides to just cast a new, uh, a new actress and actor all together, and then they start going on about aliens, this and that, with that overblown concept. Just, it didn't feel diegetic to the universe of Bolt whatsoever, and they just made a joke out of it. Now they're just embracing it here. It feels like that with how much of a joke it is with this alien night life form nonsense. I've been watching you. Now, now they've just run out of ideas. They're playing the alien card right now. You and your so-called friend. You're not the innocent you claim to be. You've proven that you'll do just about anything to ensure your own survival. And what about you, huh? Watching people die for fun, is that your protocol? No. You are mistaken, mister. <laughs> he's, he's, now, he, now he's straight up trying to rip off Ozzoli Spencer right here with the way he's presenting himself. Our future lies out there. Our destiny. But we were not built for life in space. This fragile shell holds us back. We have um, to if you expect me to take this seriously, you have got another thing fucking coming. Now. You'll all see why. Proof that my methods are worth the risk. A final contest to determine the true survival. Humanity. Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leaves. Wow. No. Fucking wow. Five, two, one. You're really a thank you. Now, now this guy is pretty much a knockoff tyrant at this point, except he actually knows how to talk. He's really starting to look more like Mr. X now. And we ha he has this cringe dialogue that is so out of place in this kind of universe. At least Albert Wesker feels more like an evolved person compared to this guy. He's not flinching whatsoever. It makes no sense for him to not make any sort of reaction to this. And he's repeating the same fucking dialogue! He just keeps kicking me away. What is this nonsense? He has no reaction to anything at all. He's exactly the same as fucking Waltz from Dying by 2! With his inhuman capabilities. What's next? He's gonna have magic powers? He's gonna unleash rays from his hands? Like it's a fucking fantasy game? And why does he have so much fucking life? Huh? 
It's probably gonna be a real pain in the ass trying to heal with how aggressive this dude is. Why does he have so much fucking life? Oh my fucking god. What a fucking disgrace! Is this even a fight? Like, what am I watching right now? At least the whole psychosis thing from Dead Space at least had a purpose. Finally. What am I fucking watching? Is it a dog fight? I'm the Alpha? Oh, to the Omega? What the fuck is this? Oh my fucking god, really? How is Jacob not dead under that weight? This has become a fucking comedy. I can take such a thing seriously in Resident Evil, but in this kind of game? No fucking way can I take this seriously. Oh, now he has magical abilities. He somehow put a shell over himself. Whoa. He is so quick to do that attack. And I'm dead again. This is such a badly designed fight. And how the fuck do you avoid that? You must have to take cover or something. He's reached critical health. That's why he's in this state where he's actually able to take damage now, for whatever reason. I guess we dealt enough physical trauma to him. I honestly don't know. He's regenerating himself again. Oh, really? We have to fight enemies? I don't have the ammo for this. This is physically impossible. And I'm dead, because I just... You can't tell if he's coming at you or not, because the audio design is shit. God damn it, really? He would not crouch at all. I gotta stay close to him. Yeah, I've, I've got to use the lurkers to my advantage. That's the only way I can do a lot of damage to him. I don't have any med injectors. Damn it. Yeah, I'm not trying to play Resident Evil Village in this shit. Yeah. 
I think Resident Evil Village is a way better game than this. At least when it comes to like the fu finale part to the Callisto Protocol. Resident Evil Village is better than this, but like some of the introductory parts to the Callisto Protocol were at least interesting. This is just... I don't know what the fuck I'm watching right now. And it keeps giving me handgun ammo for no reason when I don't even have it equipped. I can't even see him. There is no fucking way- I'm running out- I'm gonna run out of ammo. Shit! And I'm dead. Fucking hell. This takes so fucking long. And that move is so fucking garbage. At least I can crouch under that, which helps. So this is one of the few games where a passive mechanic like crouching actually serves a dodging purpose, which is... Which would be cool if this game was good, but it's not. Oh my god. This is so fucking clunky. Never mind, that didn't work. I've just gotta stay close to him to stop him from doing that bullshit range attack. The only problem is, is I can't reload effectively because he keeps cancelling my animation due to this striking me so much. I've got to use the third person cover trick to my advantage or something. God damn it! What a fucking terrible fight. And he's just chasing after me right now. He's gonna fire his range attack now. This this has to be one of the worst final bosses I have ever seen in a game, by far. Alright, so I've got to train these uh, enemies together. The only chance I'll have is to blow up a... God damn it. But it's always so annoying when they just blow up so close to you. God. Yeah, I knew I was getting hit. I should have waited until he did this range attack before getting the ammo. But I'm just having to micromanage like this because this fight is so badly designed. Like, there has to be some kind of exploit or something just so I can get this stupid fucking fight done. And I'm dead, because he would not pick up the fucking health! I didn't think this game could get any worse, but this final boss fight is one of the worst final bosses I have ever seen in a game. And it is really going to take everything I have to just persevere. There's no skill to this fight, it's just run away, hope he doesn't hit you with that fucking acid, and then try to use the lurkers to your advantage, but I don't even think they're doing any damage to him for all I know. I can't believe they would settle on this kind of damage spongy shit. What the fuck is this? And then so much has happened. Oh, like there's some kind of alien race that the warden has been interacting with. Oh, and some kind of, um... 
important apostle slash survivor, all this kind of fucking nonsense. It's so over the top and so uninteresting. we have been going through this entire game, not being able to piece together the fucking story, and now it's this. It's just fucking aliens. And I'm of course not talking about the movie, or the movie sequel, because those are miles better than this piece of shit when it comes to telling a, um, an actually interesting story. Or rather, it could be comparable to this, because Alien and Aliens, it's not the story that drives the movies. It's the characters, it's the direction, it's a lot of the other set pieces involved. And they're better designed than this pile of shit. And they just spawn right on top of you. It's so bullshit. You can't hear anything. And to be honest though, like Dead Space has never had a good final boss. The bosses have always been pretty shit, but this is a new low because it is so badly designed. There are so many poor designs present right now. And you're having to just stay close to this boss so that he doesn't do any of his bullshit attacks at all. And then you have to worry about the lurkers spawning right on top of you because the developers didn't have the foresight to program the spawns correctly. What? Come on! Oh my god! How the fuck do you avoid that?! Fucking brain dead. I seriously need to strengthen my, uh, my lexicon of words right now. I need to strengthen my dictionary of words, because this is just... There's no words in the English dictionary that can describe how shit this entire piece of shit fight is. I just gotta keep running and loot the area. It's the only way I can see ahead of him. Apparently I'm not close enough to him. It's so dumb how when you break his shell, he doesn't react or anything, he just continues doing what he's doing. Because it's that insignificant. There is no fucking creativity with this fight at all. I gotta keep moving. Gotta keep moving, gotta keep moving. He's gonna do his acid throw now. <laughs> That's weird. He didn't put he didn't put his uh his case back. The shell that normally covers his head is not there. That's strange. Oh my god, finally! And what do you bet that's not even the last phase? The last boss of the game? There's probably gonna be more. What a fucking pathetic fight. I, I can't let this scene go up without just talking about this. I mean, so not only was the first part of it just a reskin of the previous fight we did against Ferris, and previously, there were so many moments where the dodge was failing, he doesn't react to your fucking bullets, you're just busy dodging him and he varies his attacks, this and that. He takes a ridiculous amount of punishment, so you don't even know if you're doing good damage or not. Like, that was bad enough as it was. And I thought I didn't have enough ammo, but then you get into this part. This is the worst boss ever in this game. And this is one of the worst final bosses. If, if this even is the final boss, for all I know. This is not even the final boss. But you not only have to stay close to him the entire time because his acid move is so bullshit because you can't avoid it, you can't dodge it, you can only block it and you're gonna take damage every fucking time 
but you have to run away from him. You have to use the cover to your advantage. You have to somehow, like, get him to do his asset throw at a long range, run towards him, crouch, and then when he spawns in, the fucking lurkers, they spawn so close to you if you're on the outskirts of the arena because you couldn't design the spawns very well, and it's so hard to hear them because there's so much audio happening in the room that you can't properly distinguish which one's a fucking lurker and where it's coming from. And this guy has way too much fucking life, so you run out of ammo so quickly, you're practically going to be slotting into upgrades a lot. I mean, to be honest though, that's always been the case with the Dead Space games. The Dead Space games are only ever good when you're playing with upgrades. I mean, you can probably do Dead Space 1 and 2 without the upgrades, but Dead Space 3 I highly doubt it because of how broken that game is. But they just use the poor designs right here to create the shit final boss fight for an overblown story that is so over the top and so uninteresting at the same time. Now we're being introduced to aliens. Oh, he's the perfect being, the perfect step to human evolution, even though he's a fucking psychopath, for crying out loud, who says some of the cringiest dialogue ever that is so non-diegetic within the this world that they've made that is so like so comedic and so out of tone with the rest of this world like this is just a fucking shit show all the shit that this game has introduced to me just culminated in this pathetic excuse for a final boss fight like, I can say what I want about Miranda and her face transition animations in Resident Evil Village and all the other problems that she has. I can say those are bad, but they're nowhere near as bad as this. This is pathetic. This is a travesty. This is a fucking mess of a boss fight. And I really hope this is the final boss fight because I just want this game to be done right now. Of course, we're going to take his own blood type or genotype and just insert it into Danny. Although, why would you ever want to do that when he clearly mutated right here so he wasn't perfect at all? Hold on, Danny. So you're in you're infecting her with weak. an imperfect vessel. Oh, now it's the vessel's fault. That's the key to unlocking a centuries old dream. That's not failure, Mr. Lee. That's progress. Belongs to me. No. No, no, no. Just shoot him in the fucking face already! No time for false heroics. Leave the shoot this false the pagan! Shoot this false Oswald E. Spencer! To take you back to the life you once had. We can both have everything we want. So tell me, Mr. Lee. What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. I want my sister back, fucker! <laughs> A valiant effort, but surely you know by now, I never lose. <laughs> no, this time you do. <laughs> Such a waste. All this to save one life. Yes, yeah, this tiresome platitude of yours. I've heard it a million fucking times. I've killed thousands of individuals in games that have said the same exact shit, dude. Goodbye, Miss Nakamura. And Mr. Lee. I do hope you've enjoyed your stay at Black Iron. Now you want to end all this with a cheesy quote like that, Warden? Run! Move! <sighs> we await the light at the end. Oh my god. At least going. Uncharted 4 can make to running towards the light or swimming towards the light feel impactful because that game is well designed. That game is so fucking amazing. It's the best Uncharted game. But this has no impact at all. Because of the shit I've had to go through, and with how over the top this fucking story is, with how boring the fucking characters are. There's just one. No. You don't know what you're doing! I didn't. But I do now. 
It still doesn't explain if like Jacob had amnesia or like his memories were actually like rewritten so he didn't realize what he was smuggling or, or actually bringing. I don't understand. Like all that cargo that he was bringing, was that just the virus or whatever this is? It's a larval colony or something? Oh my god, P Pierce's sacrifice at the end of Resident Evil 6 and Chris's campaign has more meaning than this. In the chaos of the moment, I didn't realize he had also given me the evidence I was looking for all along. He sacrificed his life so that I could expose the truth. Oh my god, FUCK YOU! I'm giving you the fucking middle finger! I don't have time for your overly long monologue of very obvious things that we already knew or could easily imply because of how basic this whole fucking story is. Oh wow. That's exactly what it's like throughout the entire game. No it isn't. That's fucking bullshit. Really? Are you fucking kidding me? That's it? What an abrupt ending! What a fucking pitiful ending! That was appalling! That was so fucking appalling! Fuck this shit! Just fuck it! That is so fucking abrupt. That this is a piece of shit game. Yeah, I this this is a three. This is a fucking three out of ten. I do agree with my uh, subscriber nine or nine. This is a fucking three out of ten. This is a terrible game. Like the intro was bad. The middle part of it had some promise, but this ending was even worse than the fucking intro. How do you do that? How do you make an ending that is worse than the fucking intro? And they're just trying to set up for a sequel that this game will most likely not get, given the low reviews of this game. But hey, it's Glenn Schofield, he can get away with anything. It's like with the old Dark Souls argument. Oh, Dark Souls can get away with what it does, because it's fucking Dark Souls. Oh my god. This is a mess. This is so fucking shit, guys. I guess I'll just go ahead and summarize my experience with this shit game. Bad story, bad characters, subpar gameplay, times when the gameplay was actually interesting, but unfortunately nowhere near to the same degree as Dead Space 2, and a developer that prides itself on a limb dismemberment system, it made a name for itself, when they actually glamorize strategic limb dismemberment in the Dead Space series, it's not a thing in this game at all. And shooting the limbs means nothing unless you're shooting the legs, and it only works on one specific enemy type. Like, the melee combat had promise, but the clunkiness of the game, and the AI system governing the transition between the different animations, it was terrible. Oh my god. And, like, there are hardly any enemy types. We had just the basic enemy types. We had the spitter. We had the mutated enemy types. We had the lurkers. We had the blind guys. That's it! That's fucking it! Dead Space 2 and 3 had way more enemies. Dead Space 2 alone has more enemies than this game. More fucking creativity! This game didn't even try! All it did was just hang a lure right in front of your face, to bait you to actually going towards it, and it just pulls it away from you. And then the way this game just reuses those split-head boss enemies, boring environments, and then that shit final boss fight, 
That's one of the worst final bosses I have ever played in a game, by far. And then you have that abrupt ending, and Ferris just comes out of nowhere. And then you have this trope of everything being about human evolution. Oh, the virus leaked out of the labs, and it infected the prison populace. And they were conducting experiments on, th on these uh, prisoners to find the ultimate life form. All this kind of shit. And the Warden had no purpose whatsoever. Ferris was a badly acted character with some of the dumbest dialogue I have ever heard in a survival horror game. Unfucking believable. And all the positive things I experienced with this game were just completely forgotten for almost an hour and a half playing through the shitty ending. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. The vitriol I am just directing towards this game is so extreme right now. And I can't believe I, I said that this game was a better experience than Resident Evil Village. What the fuck was I talking about? Like, Resident Evil Village has its problems, and I'm, I'm up to here with Resident Evil Village, especially after that update they released with the Shadows of Rose DLC and the third-person mod. And the third-person mod, unfortunately, has big problems... And it makes the broken designs of Resident Evil Village even more broken than ever. And it's put me up to fucking ear with that game. But I'd much rather go back to that game than play this pile of shit because at least I have interesting characters to explore. And I at least have semi-decent mechanics and interesting set pieces. I'm like this piece of shit game. What a ripoff. What a fucking ripoff. And I am I'm still going to do my walkthrough of this game for sure, and maybe on a second playthrough, I won't be so overcome with negativity when I go through this game. Because the blow will at least be lessened when I go through this game a second time. But god damn, this was a pile of shit game. I mean, nowhere near to the same degree as Shadows of Rose, though. The Shadows of Rose DLC was a pile of shit piece of content. This, honestly, this game was like... 20% good, and then 80% bad. I mean, th wh what was the fucking direction of this game? It just feels like this game had so many different writers, and you can tell with how overblown and over-the-top the story is, and with the fact that the story just takes you on all these different distractions that are so far outside the main plot that you don't even realize what the story is, and you're constantly questioning what the fucking story is! This is so fucking insulting. And all the uh, promotional material they were doing for this game, and they were showing the behind-the-scenes footage, and Glenn Schofield was going on and on about the actors and actresses in this game being so compelling. Yeah, so compelling. I'm just going to turn my back to them, and they can see my asshole walking out the front door. That's it, and I'm giving them the middle finger. That's how compelling they are. I felt nothing for the characters in this game. Isaac Clarke was not that compelling of a character, but at least he had, like, the dialogue and the background and, you know, like, the stuff he had against unitology, like, stuff like that that had a bit more meat to it. Like, Isaac had more meat as a character compared to Jacob in this game and with Danny and with Elias. At least the things you were doing in Dead Space were so memorable. But there was nothing memorable about this game. And the only things that were memorable were just the shit stuff. That's it! Yeah, I'm still sticking with my score, guys. This is a 3.5 out of 10. Or a 3 out of... No, it's a 3 out of 10, sorry. Yeah. I agree with the reviews. This is a bad game. It really feels like it was rushed in certain parts. But at least it wasn't rushed to the same degree as Resident Evil Village. Because I really contemplate the mentalities and the intelligence of the development team who handled Resident Evil Village. At least this team had more intelligence than new Capcom when designing Resident Evil Village, but it was still a shit development team. And just an appalling game. Yeah. That's all I have to say about this. I'm just gonna go ahead and edit the rest of this blind playthrough and just post it onto YouTube, and then you'll see the walkthrough, and boy will I have a lot to shit on with this game. That's it. That's the end of this blind playthrough. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.